Hello, welcome back to the Mixo Shop. We're so glad to have you back here as we're getting reset up in our new shop here in Junchet, Singapore. Um, here we're in Singapore, we do craft classes, but we also make Hestai products. And today we're doing a product a demo for you for our Cool Touch cooling block. So today, if you're interested in the Cool Touch cool, cooling block, you've looked at it, you're thinking about purchasing it, or maybe you already purchased it, we're going to show you today the features of the Cool Touch cooling block, what exactly is a cooling block, and how to use it. And we're going to do it all making this uh, beautiful multi layered, multi HTV shirt that we did, that we're going to do on camera here with you to show you exactly how to look to use our uh, cooling block. So if you're interested in finding out what a cooling block does and how does it work, just stay tuned and we're gonna get right into it. Welcome to the overhead view. Um, this is our first time filming in our new place, so I hope the lighting is good. But today, you are here to see the star of the show, our Cool Touch cooling block. Uh, quickly, this is uh, the cooling block as you heard about in the introduction. It's about three and a half by three and a half um, inches across. And this is what we're gonna use today to work on our shirt for our demo so you can get acquainted with the Cool Touch. Whether you have bought one just now or you're thinking about buying one, we're gonna take you through the paces and show it how, how it goes. So as you saw, we're gonna make a shirt that incorporates several uses of the Cool Touch. Uh, we're gonna be using some hot peel vinyl, regular HTV smooth, which we'll be laying down. We'll be doing some overlay with it and we'll be doing some, showing you how to get some good adhesion onto the shirt with it using the Cool Touch cooling block. But then also in this project, we will have some glitter, which glitter is a cool peel. And we will show you how the cooling block can help you uh, speed up your cool peel um, application from there. Now, first thing first with the cooling block, a lot of things, a lot of time people will say, hey, can I just use uh, a, a rock, a granite from, uh, from Home Depot, or just a piece of plastic? The quick answer to that is, of course you can. It's crafting and you can do whatever you want to do. We have done the same thing here as in our shirt making um, journey, uh, but we have found that um, like using the granite. I actually bought a cooling block from another company that you guys might know that's just a piece of granite with uh, a, a uh, inkjet printed uh, label that they stuck on top. As I was using it, it got hot, it fractured, it broke on me, it got dust all over my shirt. One thing also the granite did is when I was rubbing it on the shirt or rubbing it even on my, my Teflon paper, the granite would catch and tear into the shirt. So I was going through Teflon sheets like crazy. So I was not happy with that. Plastic will, uh, if it's not plastic made to take heat, um, it's going to melt, it's going to warp, it's going to deform, and it's going to leave residue on your shirt and on your, um, on your Teflon paper. But you can use all those forms as well as just waiting it for it to cool naturally. You can do that as well. The difference is why we went to start using this is this is a cast acrylic cooling block that's been heat soaked. So it's formulated to take the heat and work with the heat. We have a other video that showed you how much heat that you can actually throw in this thing with our um, acrylic bracelets that we made. So this piece, this cast acrylic is made for that purpose in itself to actually take the heat. It works by what's called conduction. So it transfers the heat from the shirt to the block. You don't need to put it in the freezer. Please don't put it in the freezer because you can introduce um, moisture into your project. I've seen some people say, oh, well, that's just my style. That's one thing that I don't think you can do as a style because what you'll get is if you take this 
cooling block out of the freezer or your stone, if you're using a piece of granite, if you take anything that's really cold out of the freezer, put it down, apply heat to it, you're gonna introduce condensation from the air, which is gonna bring moisture into your project and it's the last thing you ever want. So I would wanna say, if no matter what you're using for a cooling block, never ever put it in the freezer because you, you're just gonna, you might get away with it here and there, but it's gonna ruin a project down the road and uh, you might not even know why the project is ruined, but uh, it, it's just a risk that I don't think you'd wanna take. So from here, we're gonna quickly get into the demo so you can start seeing how the cooling block works. So of course, as all t-shirt projects start, stay sharp with the t-shirt. And we have ours here, fairly wrinkled. So what the first thing we like to do is we take our Teflon sheet, press it out, and we wanna smooth out at least our working area. So we're introducing heat, we're getting moisture, as we talked about earlier, we're getting moisture out of the project and we're getting our project nice and flat. As you can see, I'm now using my Easy Press as an iron, which is okay because I'm just literally ironing the shirt. So from here, you wanna let your shirt cool down. And this is the first application we wanna show with the cooling block. You can let it cool naturally, or you could just go back and forth lightly with your cooling block, pulling up the heat from the shirt. Why are we cooling down the shirt before we ever put anything into it? Because our first vinyl that we're going to use, we'll show it to you here, is the main black background. Has a thin layer. This is the front side. This is the back side. We know it has the carrier sheet on the front side. It has a thin layer of glue, which helps it stick. And that glue activates at whatever the manufacturer says. I'm using Sizer, which is at 100 degrees, 160 degrees Celsius, which is 320 degrees Fahrenheit. But if your shirt is near that temperature, when you go to place your vinyl down, you're gonna activate that glue and you don't wanna do that. So we use our cool touch to actually cool down the shirt a bit just to get it away from that 320 degree Fahrenheit temperature. So as we're placing the shirt down, we're not activating the glue. Why we don't wanna activate the glue is because you'll leave glue residue at a half stick to the shirt and it'll weaken the adhesion on there. You want a relatively room temperature. You don't want a cold shirt, but you want a relatively room temperature shirt when you're, when you're working with it to place down your vinyl. So let's go ahead and prepare to get our vinyl down straight and nice and we'll use our new kind of uh, create design easy t maximus this is our big one very thick professional t-shirt guy that we love it's not a thin flimsy piece of thing it is a piece of work but it's not the star of the day um, but it's something that we use all the time uh, we use it where we we get it right around the neck and then we use these with a patent pending design of our dot matrix here. Our dot matrix is used for doing back graphics, but it's also great on the front because as you use these dots, you can know. Sometimes you can even put a t-shirt guide on like that and it's like, oh, is that straight? No, it's not straight. And you could tell by the dots. You use the dots to line up the shoulders and this helps you out all the way across any size t-shirts and you can know you are absolutely straight. So you have the collar, and you have that dot matrix up here that makes sure you get an exact centered shirt. So from there, we're just gonna go ahead and get our graphic down. Um, using the arrow as a reference, the up and down, a lot of people give a like, where do you put it at vertically up and down? It's really up to you. Um, I've seen people put it way too high. I've seen people put, put it way too low. The good view is in between two and three inches, but the size of your shirt is really gonna dictate it. So I'm a little bit easy here. What comes in handy with a t-shirt guide is when you're not making one-off shirts, okay? I'm just making one of these shirts and I feel like it's a little bit crooked there. I wanna get him turned that way a little bit, okay? But when you're not doing one-off shirts, when you're doing shirts for business, like a family reunion or a high school reunion, that's when you wanna use your t-shirt guide 
exclusively to make sure every shirt is in the same position every time. The position doesn't matter. Well, it matters a little bit, but it, it's not as, as critical as making sure it's in the same place every time. So if you're doing this as a business and you're pumping out shirts um, do, using vinyl, you that's why you would want to get a professional, thick, accurate t-shirt guide that you could line up with the dot matrix because you want to make sure that if you're doing 10, 20, 30 shirts for a family reunion, or a class reunion, or for even a business, that those shirts are gonna be in the same place every time. Because when people stand next to each other and the graphics are here, 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 that's gonna show up. That's the first thing people are gonna see. So that's the really beauty of this. But this is a one-off shirt, so it's fine. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna set that there and lay it down. And so now we're gonna do the layering. When I do my layering, I really like to do the, what the, what's called the overlay technique because the overlay technique is going to give you a lot of room for error. Um, a lot of some people use the knockout because they say, "Oh, I want all HTV directly onto the shirt." That would be the best if you could, but when you try to knock out technique, any shrinking, any misplacement is going to show up immediately. This one. We're, we're not machines, so having that ability to have a little bit of mistake, or not mistake, but a little bit of human to it is good and it doesn't show up in an overlay. So I like to use the black overlay. In all senses, the enemy for this is shrinkage. So two ways we're gonna to, um, reduce the shrinkage is we're gonna do what's called a tack press. That means we're gonna get just enough heat on here with a quick pressure just to make this stick. It's not for it to adhere to the shirt permanently. It's just to make it stick for placement. And then we're gonna cool it down as quick as we possibly can with our cool touch because heat is the enemy. Heat is what causes the vinyl to shrink. So cooling it as quick as you can will get the most heat off of it as possible. So we're gonna use a 160 degrees Celsius, as you'll see on the screen, because I am not in America. Um, that is 320 degrees centigrade. And it's beeping saying, come on, hurry up. Uh, that's 320 degrees centigrade, but we are gonna do it at about a five to seven second tack. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that on there, hit it. It was started at 20 and we're gonna wait till that comes down to about four and we're gonna pull it off. And this is a hot peel. So we're gonna go ahead and hot peel that off. And you see, it didn't come up. So it needs a little bit more of a tack. So we're gonna press it again, very quickly. Add another couple seconds on it. I'm pressing down a little harder this time. And we're gonna peel that up. There it goes. It's stuck that time. Nice. And we got it off. Now it is still very hot. So now we, that's when we bring the cool touch in because we want to cool it down as quick as we possibly can. So we want to get this vinyl to stop having the heat on it and stop the shrinkage because the, the quicker you take the heat away, the quicker the shrinkage stops. Letting it cool naturally will we'll make it shrink. So this is in one case where a cooling block becomes essential that to cool it down as quick as possible. So now we're gonna start doing the overlay part. So only things that, uh, only vinyl is gonna go on one vinyl. So it'll only be two layers of vinyl. So you'll never have more than two layers of vinyl together and it adheres pretty good um, when you do that. I like to go with my biggest element as the next one and the most complicated one and that would be his tan skin. And I think I'm gonna have to get my head in here a little bit to line him up. Get his little backside down a little bit. And this is where you will notice if you had the shrinkage. And I think it's good. I think we handled the shrinkage well and we got away from it. So again, from here, you know what we're going to do? You want to look at places where you can actually get more tack down 
And I'm going to pause this because I think if I trim this carrier sheet away, I can get his boots in there and I can get this because the least amount of heat you want to add to your project, the better. We're back. I cut a little bit of the carrier sheet around the side, but it, it still the boots will not fit on because it will go on top of the carrier sheet. What I'm trying to do is, is you try to get as less heat on the project as possible, again, to help with the shrinkage. So the more layers you can get down at one time, the better you can do. Um, I was trying to cut it to get the boots down, but the boots will still hit the part of the carrier sheet there. So we can't get the boots, but what we can get down is the little rockets on the bottom of the boots. We can get those in there with this. So everywhere that we can put less heat on the project is going to be better. Now, a lot of people, when they're demoing their product, they will go with something extremely easy and it makes it look like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that it's the quick and easy way to do it. This project is actually extremely difficult. The shrinkage that you would get up in here around the eyes and the mouth would just be devastating. There's a lot of there's not a lot of room for error, but you can see using the cooling block and our tack method, we've really got that shrinkage so that this lines up really well. When it starts, we, we keep a good consistent outline around it. When it shrinks, it really can just throw a project all the way off. But with that said, we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we wanna be realized that we have other layers going down. So this is gonna get a tack press as well just to tack it to it because again we don't want to introduce too much heat so quickly we'll go ahead and get this on here it usually attaches to other vinyl better so we this should actually pull off easier again it's a hot peel so the yellow comes off really well the tan is fighting so when it fights you just add a little bit more heat, a little bit more pressure. And we'll go at it again. That's the great thing about HTV. It's forgiving and we'll start peeling in another direction. That possibly has helped. You go slow though, cause you don't want to peel it up. And that is coming off nicely. There it is. Okay, so. So that came off. As you can see, we're starting to leave a little bit residue from the carrier sheets. And um, that's a question that we always get. And we're gonna take care of that in the end. So we've got a couple other pieces to get on here. We got a little belt to go there. So I am gonna actually take off a little bit of this carrier sheet because it will help with the belt. This is why planning out your, uh, your, your layering is probably important as well because you can do all this in the pre-planning. But we get the boots on and they fit in there quite nice. We're starting to see a tad bit of shrinking, but it's still nice. Still fits in there nice. And that's the thing that you will get on these really complex multiple um, multiple layered projects. We're making sure the belt doesn't overlap onto the uh, onto the other carrier sheet, which it doesn't. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit that on with just a tack because we got one more small piece to go on after this. So we will tack that down. Quick six second press. We're gonna pull that off from there. And it came off. We're gonna cool down to stop the shrinkage. Cause I don't think I did that on the last one. And I think we started to see a little bit of shrinkage around the boots. So I should have cooled down, but I think we're okay. So all of this is not like 
the project's gonna die if you don't use the cooling block. I think overall, if you don't use the cooling block um, to stop with the shrinkage, by the time, if you did a multiple layer project like this, by the time you get to the end, yeah, it's, it's gonna be shrunk to the point where you can't use it. If you're doing one layer, you could possibly, you could possibly get away with it. But again, you're taking the risk on it and it's not worth the risk. This is our last thing, our kind of bottom of orange parts of the boots that comes out from there. And I like to do a tack press all the way through to the last one. So this is gonna be even a tack press. Now at this point, you could have did a full press because it's the last layer, but I like to get everything on with a tack press. And then from there, we don't have to worry about shrinkage anymore because this whole thing is going to shrink together. Now, outside of it, we're gonna put it, his atomic kind of thing. And that is actually done with a knockout because it's, um, it's gonna be glitter. So if this all shrinks together, we're gonna be okay with it at this point. But if you were putting our HTV around it on the outside, you would definitely want to make sure that it didn't shrink anymore. But we're, so here, we're gonna do the full press now. And now we're bringing all the layers together and we're getting this vinyl extremely heated up. So it's using the glue, it's fully activating the glue, and it's actually getting that smooth vinyl hot and gooey and pressed down into the shirt. Now, while it is hot and gooey pressed in the shirt, we want to cool it down and press it in immediately. So we are literally pressing the hot, gooey vinyl into the shirt and cooling it at the same time. So it's going into the fibers, cooling off and locking in at the same time. I'm giving it a good little press with the, uh, the cool block because it is doing two jobs. It is actually using pressure and it's actually pulling heat, cooling it down as it's pulling pressure. If that vinyl is sitting on top while it's cooling, it's going to shrink and pull away from the shirt while it's shrinking. So that's why we want to cool it and press it in our final thing. Also, all of that, those carrier sheet uh, marks that we saw are now being smoothed out all at one point. So there will be no difference in the carrier sheet because it's all had its final press at the same time. That's another reason why I like to do the final press with no carrier sheets on at all because then it gets the full press out from there. And then we take this off. You can hear the adhesion that had to the sheet from the press with the cooling block. And there it is on very nice. Okay, so now we got our smooth HTV down, press very nice feels really good onto the shirt. And we're gonna bring the last accent around the outside of the shirt, which is going to be our glitter. Now glitter is a cool pill. It's not like smooth HTV. Glitter, your glitters, your flocks, uh, your rainbows, those are usually your cool pills. Um, these are things that are strictly utilizing the glue on the back because they, they're not thin and they, they won't melt and sink into the fibers like your smooth HTV. So they're only utilizing the glue on the back of it. And so that's where their cool peels and where the um, cool block is actually gonna come into play again on a different application. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that laid down, heat up that glue, and then cool down that glue so it locks it in place so for a better adhesion. And so we're gonna go ahead and place this, getting my head in there again, place this around, it goes around the outside. And so the way I design this, you have overlay on the a hot vinyl in the middle, but this glitter, is actually using a knockout. So you'll see there's a space in between the graphic and the outline glitter. Um, glitter does not um, shrink 
So you don't have to worry about shrinkage on your flocks and your glitters. Those things will not shrink, but you, but they are cool pill and you do want to worry about adhesion. Uh, we're gonna stick with 160 degrees at 20 seconds. This is a, a bit big here. So. With this being a cool peel, we wanna press and cool it down quickly. So we're trying to bring the temperature. We're not trying to get it cold. We're just trying to, because it's still hot to the touch. We're just trying to bring that temperature down below the glue activation point. So the glue actually is locking into place. So it's pretty cool now. And we're gonna take it off from there. If you get any fight in your HTV, just peel from another direction. And there it is. So what we got in here, and we probably should have did it reverse, but I think it's okay. It, it looks pretty. It actually put glitter all into our, um, our smooth vinyl, which is okay for the look and the, and the design. We could have did it in reverse where we put down the, H, um, the glitter first and then did our process with the, with the um, heat vinyl if we wanted to keep it clean of the glitter, but I like the glitter kind of floating in there. It kind of matches the thing together. But this is how we use our Cool Touch cooling block. Um, I want to give you some close-ups of it, and um, thanks for looking at the overhead. And we're going to go to some close-ups of the project so you can see how it really came out. Here we are with the close-ups. As you can see, it is very deep into the fiber of the shirts. So deep, in fact, you can see where the glitter is pressed into the smooth HTV. This shirt came out with great adhesion, and I think you can see very minimal shrinkage on a very detailed shirt. So I hope you enjoyed this demo of our Cool Touch cooling block. Uh, join us back here for more demos and more product reviews. And enjoy your product. Thanks so much for watching.